Hi and welcome. Today we are going to take some statistics questions and and answer them. Okay, then you take your calculator, your book and your pen so that you follow me as I do this because I'll be saying certain things that are not uh, part of the questions and answers but they are likely to also come in your exams. Okay, so make sure you jot the new things I'll be saying apart from what is in the slide down as well. Okay, so please do well to also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Okay, thank you. Now let us start. Question 1 says, rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true is known as or is called now whenever you reject the null hypothesis are you with me when it is actually true okay you've committed type 1 error so the correct answer for this is what a whenever you reject the null hypothesis when it is true you've committed what type 1 error is that clear yeah you've committed what type 1 error if it is false and you and you fail to reject it it is type 2 error you know if something is false if the, if the null hypothesis is false you have to reject it and you fail to reject it you've committed type 2 error when this is true when the null hypothesis is true you are supposed to accept it but you rather rejected it so you've committed type 1 error is that clear yeah so let's proceed to the question 2 question 2 says the best point estimate of the population mean of the population mean is the now the best point estimate of the population mean is the sample mean okay so the correct answer for this is c sample mean then the next question says because of the economic condition of a, conditions a firm reports that 30 percent of its accounts receivable from other business firms are overdue now if an accountant takes a random sample of five accounts five word accounts determine the probability that now use this one's question three and four now to do that what you know probability can be given in percentages it can be given in fraction or decimal so when you see this you know it's a probability it's a p okay then they said they take a sample of what five accounts meaning this is your n exactly this is your n and this is your p okay so you should know you are going to use binomial for this whenever you have a probability of one or the past okay and the number of events okay and they want you to find probability of another find the probability that you should know this can lead you to binomial distribution okay so the formula for binomial is what probability of an event x occurring is equal to n combination x some people write it n combination r when you see that it's still same okay i have used x in place of r because i'm taking my values as x n combination x are you with me then p times p exponent x times p exponent x okay then times into bracket 1 minus p 1 minus p exponent n minus x n minus x okay n minus x now this one minus p some people write the whole thing as q even if you've written it as q to get a q you still do one minus p so that's why i've decided to write it in full at once one minus p okay so this is a binomial formula are you with me this is a binomial formula. So this question three is asking that none of the account is overdue. When we say none, none means you find a probability that x is exactly zero. Okay. So probability that x is exactly zero. So you are going to be doing substitution. Okay. X is exactly zero is equal to. Look at this. N combination x, isn't it? So you take. Your n is 5, right? You say 5 account. So you say 5, 5 combination 0. Because your x is 0 in this question. Then times p. So what to be our p? Our p will be just 
convert it to decimal press 30 over 100 it gives you 0 0.3 okay or 3 over 10 so you fix 0 0.3 there 0 0.3 0 0.3 exponent 0 exponent 0 times 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.3 1 minus 0 0.3 exponent what n minus 0 that is what n minus k that's 5 minus 0 5 minus 0 I follow it yeah so you can fix the whole of this on your calculator okay you can put the whole thing on your calculator so what you do is that you take your calculator look at take press 5 then check on the calculator there's a place they've written shift it's written in yellow color or gold okay press that key shift after pressing it then you press the division sign where the signs are like multiplication addition minus and division press the division you see c will come combination then you press zero times then you press 0 0.3 exponent zero times then one minus 0 0.3 inside the bracket press everything how you've seen it exponent five minus zero when you do that properly you should get what um b as your answer you get 0 0.16807 and in four decimal places will be 1681 so the correct answer for three is b 16 0 0.1681 then question four says exactly two are count over b when we say exactly two it means s is exactly two so you solve it the same way s is exactly two should be equal to five combination two five combination two times okay times 0 0.3 exponent 2 okay you are using the formula e exponent x so our x is 2 so 0 0.3 exponent 2 times 1 minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.7 you can fix it straight if you know the answer 1 minus 0 0.3 exponent what 5 minus 2 so you do this too, you fix this the way you've done this. Don't wipe off everything in your calculator. Just shift the case out. Go and delete all where the zeros are. You delete the zero from here and put two there. Delete the zero from here and put two there. Delete the zero from here and put two there. Then you press equal to. Okay. Then you get 0 0.3087 as your answer. So the correct answer for question four is A. Is that clear? Let's proceed to the next one. This one says the lifetime of an electric component is known to follow a normal distribution with a mean with mean mu equals 2000 hours and standard deviation is 200 hours find the probability that the randomly selected component will last use it to answer question 5 to 7 a and 5 between 2000 and 2400 now pay attention to this now before i solve question 5 i just want you to understand something I'll solve question six and seven before I get back to five. Okay. Now they've given us mean. Okay. They say it follows a normal distribution. Even if the question doesn't tell you that it follows a normal distribution, and they've given you mean and standard deviation, you should know that you are going to do what I'm coming to do right now. Okay. A question can also give you variance. Instead of standard deviation, they will give you variance. When the question gives you variance, convert the variance to standard deviation. To convert a variance to standard deviation, square root, square root, not square, square root, root, okay? Square root of variance gives you a standard deviation. Is that clear? Huh. So, now, to do this, okay, you need to know the formula for Z. Z is equal to a normal distribution, okay? Z is equal to X minus mu x minus mu s minus mu the mu looks like u s minus mu over standard deviation this is the symbol for population standard deviation okay this is how you write it so that's the formula for z okay now to answer question six they said more than 2200 
So first of all, you consider your x to be. I'm answering question six. You consider your x to be two thousand two hundred. So you substitute two thousand two hundred in place of x. So two thousand two hundred minus. What is the mean according to the question? The question gave us a mean of what? 2,000 hours, isn't it? So you substitute 2,000 there. 2,000. 2,000. Divided by, what is our standard deviation? Standard deviation is what? 200. 200. Remember, I told you that if a question doesn't give you standard deviation, but the formula the standard deviation the formula but the question doesn't give you a standard deviation but it is a variance you convert the variance to a standard deviation yourself convert the variance to a standard deviation okay and to convert a variance to standard deviation it is the square root of the variance that gives you a standard deviation okay yeah so but this has given a standard deviation straight so we use it so press your calculator 2200 minus 2000 all divided by 200 gives you what positive 1 and positive 1 is the same as what positive 1.00 is that not it ah. so what the question wants us to find is more than 2200 since we've converted 2200 to 1 in form of z it's now a z1 okay meaning more than 1 so to find more than 1 what does it mean when you sketch a curve Let's say sketch a curve. I'm not sketching a curve. Well. Okay, manage it like that. Okay. Now, you know, the middle of the curve, of the standard normal curve is always zero. Okay, the mean, the middle is always zero. So to sketch one, you see negative values are here, positive values are here. To, so to sketch one, one will definitely be somewhere around here, isn't it? One will definitely be somewhere around here, isn't it? So, but they say more than. The question says more than. More than. More than one. The area more than one will be where? Which side? This side. This area is more than one. So, let's shade the area more than one. Okay. Meaning we should find this area. Okay. So, to find this shaded area, are you with me? You are going to check your Z table for one. Are you with me? 1.00. So let's go to our Z table. Now, this is a Z table. This is a positive Z table and this is a negative Z table. Now, apart from this positive and negative, we have another Z table which is half Z table. The half Z table also has its positive and negative. As for this table, it's a full Z table. How do I know? You see, when a Z table starts with 0 0.500, there's a 0 before the point, okay? Assume it like that. 0 0.500 here. Or look at this one to 0.50. It's a full Z table. A half Z table will start with 0 0.0000. That's how that's how half Z table starts. Okay. Then we are using a full Z table. Now you come and check for one. 1. 1.00. So this is 1.00. Okay. 1.00. So what did 1.00 give you? It gives you 0. Point, there's a zero before the point. Okay. 0.8413 so that's the answer for 1.0 0. 0.8413 so we've gotten 0. 0.8413 right and now one thing you should know is that whenever you check something from the z table like you check a positive z score from its corresponding positive z table the answer you get means to the left it means area to the left so 0. 0.8413 one three please do you understand me what i mean is that when you are checking a negative a positive z score on its own positive z table the answer you get is to the left okay when you check a negative z score also on its own negative z table the answer you get also means area to the left so this one which we checked it on a positive z table what we got means the left so to get the right hand side okay to get this side that you are looking for, you say 1 minus 0 0.84113. Okay, to get the side, you say 1 minus what? 1 minus 0 0.8413.
So when you do 1 minus 0 0.8413, what do you get? You get what? The answer to be what? B. That's 1587. 1587. Is that it? Now, let's proceed to question 7. Question 7 says less than 2200. Less than two. So you find Z again, but we, it's, they are using the same thing. 2200, 2200. So we'll get our Z to be 1 this time around again because the X here is the same as the X here. So we'll still get our Z to be 1. And, but this one is saying less than. Less than. Less than. This is a straight line, okay? This is a straight line. And the middle is what? Zero, right? And one will be plotted somewhere here, isn't it? So one. When we say less than one, it means your left hand side, this side. So we should find the area of this side. Now, when you check the Z table, the answer you get, I told you it means the left, isn't it? So you, since it means this place, you've gotten the answer for this one straight. So there's nothing you subtract for this type again. Okay, 8413. Say, so you are looking for this side. And this side already means left. So, 8413. So, the answer for this is C. 8413. But to answer question 5. For question 5, you are going to find two Z's. Are you with me? You find two Z's. You find Z1. Let's say Z1. Now, to find Z1, you consider, you first take this as your first X. So, to take this as X, you have 2000. 2000 minus 2000 minus 2000 you know the mean is 2000 isn't it so 2000 minus 2000 divided by the standard deviation which is 200 so do that 2000 minus 2000 divided by 200 gives you what it gives you zero are you following it gives you zero then you do the second one you calculate z2 Z2 will be what? 2,400. 2,400. 2,400 minus 2,000 divided by what? 200. Divided by what? 200. When you do this as well, when you do this, you should get what? 2. Isn't it? That's 2.00. 2.00 2 is the same as 2.00 okay 2.00 0 is the same as 0.00 .00. okay 0 .00. 0.00 so to do this when we say area between it's a between okay to find between what we mean is that Please, if you know it or you know how to find it straightforward, there's no need straight, uh, sketching the curve, okay? But we say between 0 and 2. And you know 0 is always at the middle, right? So we've gotten where 0 is. And 2, positive values are at this side. So let's say we take 2 to the other side. 2. But the question says between 2000 and 2400. It's now between 0 and 2, right? So I meaning you should find between 0 and this. And two between them okay so to get between what you do is that you go to the z table you go and look for two so 2.00 we'll locate 2.00 here that is 2.0 and zero zero you see 2.00 we it give us 0 0.9772 isn't it 0 0.9772 that's what 2.00 give us and that 0 0.9772 means what area to the left isn't it area to the left i told you whenever you check a positive value on its z score it means area to the left so 0 0.9772 9772 exactly then you also find zero to the left okay you go and check it on the on the z table also but zero, you can know the answer of it is 0 0.5. You see, 0 0.00, 0 0.00, it gives you 0 0.5000. Okay, so you get 0 0.500. So this 0 to the left is 0 0.5. Okay, 
so to get the area between okay pay attention to get the area between them you you take the z and uh, the probability you get for two minus the probability you get for zero so that's 0 0.9772 minus 0 0.5 and that gives you 0 0.4772 so the correct answer for this is d all that's fine so let's proceed question 8 says a normal distribution has a skewness of now a normal distribution has no skewness okay so the answer is 0 c okay a normal distribution has a skewness of 0 okay because uh when you do three times mean minus median if your mean and your median are equal it will definitely give you a zero so the coefficient of skewness for a normal distribution is zero it is zero because the normal distribution is symmetric whenever something is symmetric its skewness is zero when something is right skewed its skewness is a positive value when it is left skewed its skewness is a negative value but when it is symmetric its skewness is zero okay and the normal distribution one of the characteristics of it is that it is symmetric about the mean you remember that yeah so since it is symmetric about the mean its skewness is what is zero let's proceed question 9 says what is the z value for a two-sided hypothesis test on a population mean when alpha equals 0 0.05 now this says what two-sided two-sided not one-sided okay two-sided when whenever a question says you should find the z value for a two-sided not one-sided please for a two-sided okay just do like this just say one minus if you're using a full z table that's when you do that one minus alpha over two one minus alpha over two okay so one minus what is your alpha? 0 0.05, isn't it? 0 0.05 over 2. 0 0.05 over 2 gives you what? 0 0.025. Is that not it? 0 0.025. Isn't it? So, when you take 1 minus 0 0.025, 0, sorry, 0, 0 0.025 0 0.025 1 minus 0 0.025 gives you 0 0.975 975 okay or 9750 okay so this is what you do if it was one sided you, you just do one minus alpha that's all if it was one sided okay you just do one minus alpha just one minus alpha that is 0 0.05 one minus 0 0.05 but because just because this is two sided that is why we are dividing the alpha by two before we subtract it from one is that clear so what you get 0 0.975 you go and check it on the z table but you won't check it at the side you check it at the middle it's a probability you want to find a z score with it so we are looking for 0 0.9750 so you search for it nine sevens are here nine sevens are here so you can easily come and look for it around there nine seven you see this is 0 0.9750 have you seen how we've located nine seven five zero so what you do is that you trace it to this side what is the 1.9 isn't it when you trace it upward to you have six there isn't it you have six there what it means is 1.96 is that clear 1.96 that's what it means so therefore the z score is what c 1.96 is that fine okay so let's proceed question 10 says a fair coin is tossed five times and the number of heads recorded find the mean number of heads that will be recorded Okay, you should find the mean number of heads. So to find mean, are you with me? Now, here, you know the number of times it is tossed, isn't it? So n is what? It's 5. n is 5, isn't it? Also, 
Do you know you can know P from here? The reason is, they say heads, right? When you toss a coin once, okay, when you toss a coin once, what is the probability of getting a head? When you toss a coin once, the sample space is what is two, isn't it? Head or tail, isn't it? And there is only one head in it, so the probability of getting a head is one over two. Probability of getting a head is one over two. So if probability of getting a head is one over two, and number of tossing is five, to find a mean, to find mean, okay, mean is equal to, you must know this formula, n times p. Okay, in binomial distribution, mean is equal to n times p. Okay, so since our n is 5, we substitute times rp is 1 over 2. So 5 times 1 over 2 gives you what? 2.5, isn't it? So the correct answer for this is c. Is that clear? So let's proceed to question 11. Question 11 says, find 2z values so that 48% of the middle area is bounded by them. When you see this kind of question, even if they give you 68%, 70-something percent, or whatever, as far as the question looks like this, find the two Z values. Two Z values, okay? Find the two Z values so that something-something of the middle area is bounded by them. Whatever the percentage they give you, just keep this formula in mind. This is the formula you are going to use. 1 plus C all divided by 2. 1 plus c all divided by 2. The meaning of this c is this. What the percentage they will give you. Okay. The percentage they will give you. In this type of question, not other types of question, in this particular type of question, when they say find the 2z value so that something something of the middle area, middle area is bounded by them. This is the only way you can solve it. Okay, you say 1 plus C divided by 2, where the C stands for the percentage given to you in decimal. So, that will be what? 1 plus 48% in decimal is what? 0 0.48, isn't it? 0 0.48. 0 0.48. All divided by 2. And that gives you what? Uh, that gives you 0 0.74, right? 0 0.74. 0 0.7400. 0 .74. It's 0 0.74, but you add 0, 0 to it. It's a probability. Okay. They want you to use it to find a Z score. So since they want you to use it to find a Z score, you go to the Z table. Since it's a probability, meaning you look for it at the middle to find a Z score. If you have a z score and you want to find probability, you have to check the side. But you don't know the z score, you want to find z score, you have to check the middle and correspond it to a z score. So we have a probability term of 0 0.7400, isn't it? And we want to use it to find a z score. So 0 0.7400, we'll look, we'll look for it. 0 0.74. We have 0 0.70 here. 73 is here. Okay, 74 is here. But we need 7400, isn't it? But we can't locate 7400. But we can see 7389 and 7422. Meaning it is between this and this. It's between this and this. Because after 73, you are supposed to go to 74. Here lies the case. We can see 7400. We can see 7422. Meaning it's between the two of them. Okay. So since it is between them, you locate the z score of this person. You also locate the z-score of the second person. So the z-score of this person is 0 0.64. Isn't it? 0 0.64. 0 0.64. And this is 0 0.65. You, add, you find its average. You add it together and divide it by 2. 0 0.65. You add them together and divide it by 2. If you do that, you get 0 0.645. 0 0.645. Okay. 
So that's the answer. So 0 0.645. But you have 0 0.64 here, so you just choose the 0 0.64. Even though you got 0 0.645. But since you have, you can see it in the possible answer, you can see 0 0.64, you choose this. Now the reason why we say plus or minus is that at this side there will be a minus, at this side is a plus. We said two, two z values. Okay, so plus or minus 0 0.64. So that's the answer to this as well. Okay, so let's proceed to the next one. This one says, arrivals at a four filling station average 15 vehicles per hour. Suppose the attendant leaves a service booth for five minutes. Okay, use this to answer question 12 and 13. So to do this, question 12 says, what is the probability that no vehicle, no vehicle arrives for service during the five minute period? Now take note of something. This is a poison distribution, poisson, okay? Poisson distribution. Because it gives you a mean. Average means mean. It gives you the mean per time, okay? It gives you a mean per time and nothing else. And it asks you to find probability. When you see a question that gives you mean of something, I want you to find probability of another. You should know it's a Poisson question. And the formula for Poisson says what? Probability of an event X occurring should be equal to, isn't it? Mu exponent X, mu exponent X times E exponent negative mu, E exponent negative mu all over X factorial. All over x factorial yes. now some people write the mu as lambda like this instead of mu they put lambda there this okay so when you see that don't be confused it's still same thing okay now how do we solve this now this this is not a straightforward question the reason is you see the average 15 15 vehicles is per hour is for one hour isn't it now, suppose the attendant leaves the boot for five minutes. What is the probability that no vehicle arrives during the five minute period? Now, to find the probability that x is exactly zero, we said no vehicle it means x is exactly zero. Are you following? X is exactly zero. No vehicle means x is exactly zero. Now, under normal circumstances, if there was if you if there was no this condition, okay. If this condition was not there, and you just said 15 vehicle per hour, you just do your substitution straightforward and go. So your mean is 15, right? So 15 exponent x, 0, okay, times e exponent negative 15 all over x factorial. But in this question, you are not going to solve it like that because there is a condition that it leaves the boot for 5 minutes. So you have to find the mean for 5 minutes separately. Now, if the mean for... Uh, if the mean for one hour is 15, then the mean for five minutes will change. Okay, so to find the mean for five minutes, are you with me? To find the mean for five minutes, what you do is you are going to take 15, the 15 vehicle, okay, you are going to take the 15 vehicle and divide it by the number of minutes. You know, in one hour, there are 60 minutes in one hour, so you divide it by 60 to get one minute. Okay, so when, when you use it to get one minute, you multiply it by five to get five minutes. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? What I mean is that you want to find five minutes. If the average for one hour is 15, then you need to find the average for five minutes. So to get the average for five minutes, what you do is that, you know, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So per minute, the average will be 15 divided by 60 for a minute. A minute will just be 15 divided by 60. But you need 5 minutes. So since a minute is 15 divided by 60, you have to multiply it by the 5 minutes. Is that clear? So and that gives you what? Um, 0 point something. Can you check it out? So that gives you 1.25. So the new mean is 1.25. So instead of 15 for the mean, in this question, you are going to use your mean as 1.25. Okay. So you substitute 1.25 in place of the mean. 1.25 exponent 
zero. Your x is zero, so exponent zero. Times e exponent negative one point two five. Times e. You know the formula says e exponent negative mu. So mu is the mean one point two five. One point two five. Okay, divided by x factorial, our x is 0, so 0 factorial. So to put this on your calculator, kindly take your calculator. Now, press the division sign, uh, the one, be the one below, beneath the shift and the solve. Okay, so when you press it, then you press 1.25 at the top, at the numerator, exponent 0, and times. Now, to get the e, press shift now look at where the oct is look at okay do you see where you on your calculator right under it there's a key there they've written log on it and right under that one too there's another key there they've written ln natural log ln okay that key press it you will see an e exponent something then you put negative zero and uh, 1.25 there okay then you come down you come to the denominator and fix zero to get factorial, you press shift. Now look at the on where you on your calculator. Beside the on, there is a key there, the written mode on it. Now, under that mode too, there is another key right under the mode. You press that key, you get factorial. It looks like an exclamation sign. Okay, so that gives you then you press equal to gives you 0 0.2865. 0 0.2865. So the correct answer for this is C. Now, to solve the probability of at least 1, probability of at least 1 is always equal to 1 minus probability of none. Whenever you have at least 1, if you know none, it's always equal to 1 minus probability of none. Okay, at least 1. When we say at least 1, they didn't say exactly 1, at least 1. At least 1 is always 1 minus probability of none. So that will give you 1 minus what is probability of none 0 0.2865 so do 1 minus 0 0.2865 you should get your answer as a okay a as your answer 0 0.7133 okay so that is the correct answer for question uh, question 13. Okay, so let's proceed. Question 14 says, a sales firm receives on average three calls per hour. Similar question, three calls per hour on each store free number. For any given hour, find a probability that it will receive. You see that this one, there is no time condition like the previous one. It's straightforward, three calls per hour. So you are going to use your mean as three straightforward. Okay, so I hope you know the formula. But this question is not, this question says at most three calls. When we say at most three calls, at most three, probability that x, at most three means less than or equal to three. Okay, at most three means less than or equal to three, meaning maximum should be three. So it will start from probability that x is exactly one, exactly zero, okay probability that s is exactly zero or s is exactly one or s is exactly one okay or s is exactly one okay or s is exactly two they say at most three mini maximum should be three s is exactly two or S is exactly 3. Or probability that S is exactly 3. S is exactly 3. Okay. So to do that, I hope you know the formula for the Poisson. You use that formula to find S is exactly 0 separately. Find S is exactly 1, 2, and 3 and add them together. So we do that. So we have our mean is 3, right? So the formula says mu exponent what x. So in this one, our x is 0. 
isn't it times e exponent negative mean which is three our mean is three all divided by what zero factorial isn't it plus this will be what three exponent one mean exponent x so three exponent one times three exponents sorry e exponent negative three e exponent negative three that's negative mean all over what one factorial okay then you go to the next one too like that i following three exponents two times e exponent negative two negative three sorry negative mean okay so negative three don't make that mistake over two factorial over two factorial then you go to the next one three exponent what our x is now three right so mean exponent three okay mean exponent three times e exponent negative three e exponent negative three negative mean our mean is three our mean is three all over what x factorial our x is three to here okay so you solve this on your calculator just as you do the previous one so when you calculate this you get what let me mention them to you so that you just uh write them when you calculate the first one you get what zero point um zero you get zero point zero four nine eight for this zero point zero four nine eight then when you calculate this you get zero point one four nine four when you calculate this you get 0 0.2240 and this two you get 0 0.2240 so when you add them together you get 0 0.6472 so the correct answer for it is d okay then let's go to 15. 15 says at least three calls at least three calls means what x is greater than or equal to three greater than or equal to three and when something is greater than or equal to 3, it means that x is exactly 3 going upwards. Okay, at least 3, meaning 3 is the minimum. So 3 upwards. S is exactly 3 going upwards, which you don't know. Okay, so we are not going to use this formula for it. You were supposed to say plus probability that s is exactly 4, plus probability of s is exactly 5, but we don't know the n. This is just average. We don't know n itself, number of sample we don't know it so since we don't know it we can use this formula we have to use the opposite formula okay so this formula won't be used so to use the opposite formula you must know that the opposite formula says one minus now so remember it easily what is the opposite of greater than or equal to the opposite of greater than or equal to is less than okay the opposite of less than or equal to is greater than okay so the opposite of greater than or equal to be what less than so it should be one minus the opposite do you get it so one minus uh x less than three one minus probability of x less than three okay please probability of x greater than or equal to three should be equal to one minus its opposite its opposite is x less than three so that gives you what one minus into bigger bracket you know when we say x is less than 3, it means that probability of x is exactly 0. Or, that's a plus. Or, probability that x is exactly 1. x is exactly 1. Are you following? Or, or, probability that S is exactly two. Those are the three things less than three. Okay, those are the three things less than three. Sorry, S is exactly two. They are the only ones less than three. Three is not part. They are less than three. Okay. So what you do is that you use the Poisson formula to find the probability that S is exactly what? S is exactly zero. So you have one minus into bracket. You find S is exactly zero, which you know already, right? So 
When you find s is exactly 0, you get 0 0.0498. You also find s is exactly 1, you get 0 0.1494. You find s is exactly 2, which is 0 0.2240. You can even take them from what you get over here, isn't it? Then you add them together. When you add them together, you get 0 0.4232. Okay, 0 0.42. 0 0.4232 okay you add them together if it's mcqs you can just fix everything on calculator after pressing this then you say plus then you press this also plus then you press this you put the whole of this plus then you put the whole of this you get the answer straightforward since it's mcqs so in theory too, you can do that one minus then you open a bigger bracket then you fix this 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 <clears throat> okay so that gives you what 0 0.5768 so the correct answer for this is c so let's proceed to question 16. question 16 says 10 items are selected at random from a production line find a probability of exactly nine non-defective if it is known that the probability of a defective item is 0 0.05 to solve this, there's how many items? 10 items. So our n is 10. Okay. Our n is 10. Okay. But the question says you should find the probability for exactly 9 non defective. So our p will be 0 0.95. I'll tell you why the p is 0 0.95. Someone will be expecting me to choose p as 0 0.05. But no. Now, they said defective. This 0 0.05 goes for defective. But the question is interested in exactly 9 non-defective. So probability of non-defective is what you use as p. You won't use the probability of a defective as p because it's non-defective. You are interested in non-defective. So your p should be the probability of non-defective, which is 0 0.95. You know, if defective is 0 0.05, non-defective will be 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.95. Okay. Yeah, that's what you use as your p. Exactly. So to calculate this, you are going to use the binomial formula. You have n and you have p. Okay. So... The binomial formula says what? You are finding probability of exactly 9, isn't it? You are finding probability of x is exactly 9. Exactly 9 non-defective. So we are going to have what? 10 combination what? N combination x, which is now 10 combination 9. 10 combination 9. Okay. Times p exponent x which is p exponent 9 that's 0 0.95 exponent 9 0 0.95 0 0.95 exponent 9 isn't it exponent 9 okay times 1 minus 0 0.95 which will give you 0 0.05 okay 1 minus 0 0.95, which will give you 0 0.05. So, in this question, they gave you the probability of the other. Okay. 10 exponents 9. N minus X. That's what the binomial formula says, if you can recall. I hope you wrote it down. Yeah. So, 10 exponent 9. That's N, N minus X. 10 minus X. N minus X. Okay. So, 10 minus 9. So, when you fix all this on your calculator, and you do it properly, you should you should get C as your answer 0 0.3151. Okay, so C is the correct answer for this 0 0.3151. So let's proceed. Question 17 says to qualify for a police academy, candidates must score in the top 10% on a general abilities test. Now the test has a mean has a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 20. Find the lowest possible score to qualify. Assume the test scores are normally distributed. Now, to solve this, are you with me? To solve this, what you are going to do is that 
whenever you see question like this, they want you to find a score. See, you've been given a mean. Are you with me? You've been given a standard deviation as well. But the question is not interested in you finding probability. The question wants you to find the lowest possible score. Okay. Meaning this question wants you to find X. The question has given you Z, Z to find X. Do you remember the formula for Z? Z is equal to X minus mean divided by standard deviation. Are you with me? In this question, this question has given you Z to find X. But it hasn't given you the Z also straightforward. They want you to use this to find the Z. So this is how it will go when you see a question like this. What this means is that when you sketch a curve, are you with me? When you sketch a curve, they said candidate must score in the top 10%. Top what? Top. Top 10%. Top 10%. This top tells you where this thing should be. So top. Do you get it? Top 10%. Meaning this area is 10%. This area is 0. Point, no, 10% means 0. 0.1. 0. 0.1000. 0, 0, 0. Okay, 0. 0.1 or 0. 0.1000. 0, 0, 0. Okay. So top 10%. Is that clear? Yeah. So to do that, to get a Z, you subtract this term from 1. When you say 1 minus 0. 0.1 to get this area. Okay, you find this area. To get this left area, it's 1 minus the right. So 1 minus 0. 0.1000, it will give you what? Uh, meaning 90% of them will not be in the top. So 0. 0.9000. The question has given you this area. The 0, the 10% you've been given means the top, this side, top. You get it. So 1%, 10%, that's 0 0.100. So you have to find this side by saying 1 minus this side. You get this side, so 900. So now, do you remember that we use a z-score to find area to the left? So you can also use area to the left to find z-score back. That's the logic, you, that's what you want to do here. Just like we've been using z-score to find area to the left. We are coming to use, we know area to the left here, so we want to use it to find the z score back. That's the only thing we are going to do. So we go to the z table. We look for 0 0.9000. 0 0.9000, we have 8997 here, and we have 9015 here. Okay. We need 9000, not 9015. So since that's not it, meaning it's between this and this, isn't it? So since it is between them, since it's between them, you take their various z scores. So the z score for this person is 1.28, isn't it? 1.28. And the z score for this person, are you with me? The z score for this uh, is one point. 1.29 are you following 1.29 so what you do is that you can add the two of them together 1.28 plus 1.29 divided by 2 okay 1.28 plus 1.29 divided by it gives you 1.285 uh, uh, is that it 1.285 that's what it gives you so meaning your z is 1.285 1.285 285 or 1.29 no 1.285 in two decimal places 1.29 okay so so now to calculate the z to calculate the x the formula for x is mean plus z times standard deviation z times standard deviation it's not any new formula okay it's not, it is derived from this. It is derived from z equals x minus mean over standard deviation. x minus mean over just what we've been doing here. Okay. We, I made x the subject. Making x the subject, you get x to be equal to mean plus z and standard deviation. 
If you know you forget this formula, just quote this formula in substitute z in place of z, standard deviation in place of standard deviation, mean in place of mean, then you group like them to find x. But if you have to keep this formula to make it very straightforward. x is equal to mean plus z times standard deviation. We got this from here. Okay, so since s is equal to mean plus z times standard deviation, what is our mean? Our mean is what? 200. So you substitute 200 there. 200. Okay, plus what is our z? Our z is what one point. You can put it in brackets because you are coming to multiply them separately. One point two eight five. Okay, one point two eight five times what is the standard deviation? The standard deviation is twenty. Okay, so you get what two hundred. 200 plus 200 plus when you multiply this when you multiply this properly you should get um i think uh you just do all together you get 225.7 okay 220 okay let's multiply this separately 1.285 times 20 it gives you 25.7 25.7 so add them together it gives you 225.7 okay so that's the final answer but you can see 225.7 here so the closest number to 225.7 225.7 is 226 so you choose 226 as your answer so the correct answer for this is d okay so let's go to question 18 question 18 says the average age of a vehicle registered in a country is 96 months. Assume the standard deviation is 16 months. If a random sample of 36 vehicles is selected, find the probability that the mean of their age is between 90 and 100. Between. Now, this is not just a normal distribution like the one we were doing before. See, we are given a random sample of 36. In this one, they give you the n okay so in this your formula is not going to be like the other one here your formula will be what sample mean x bar okay you see these things give you a sample means they said what is the probability that mean of their age is between meaning mean is this and this okay so sample mean minus population mean divided by standard deviation over root n that's the formula using this one. This is a different thing from the one we were doing before. Okay. Even to differentiate between them, the previous one, they don't give sample size. Have you, have you been given sample size before? No. They only give you this. They only give you the mean and the standard deviation or variance. But yeah, they've given a sample size as well. So that's what. So you find Z1, isn't it? So Z1 will be what? You first take your first X bar as 90. Okay, it's not x, this is not x, it's x bar. Okay, you first take your first x bar as 90. The population mean is what is the mean in the question. Okay, 96 months, so 96. Okay, 96, 90 minus 96. Divided by, what is the standard deviation? The standard deviation is what, 16. So, divided by 16. 16 divided by 16 divided by root root n and our n is 36 so root 36 do you get it 36 so you can fix the whole of this on your calculator okay 16 16 divided by root 36 90 minus 96 all divided by 16 divided by root 36 if you calculate it well, you should get um, negative 2.25. Negative 2.25. Negative 2.25. Then you also find Z2. Okay. Z2 will be what? You take the second X bar. Okay. 100 minus 96. 100 minus 96. Okay. 100 minus 96 
divided by 16 divided by 16 divided by root 36 root 36 root 36 so that gives you what it gives you positive 1.5 positive 1.5 so to find the area between them, okay, this this is supposed to be a straight line, okay. So forgive, pardon me for that, but because I'm because of the case I'm using right now, it's disturbing me a bit. So when we say between, now in a standard normal curve, the middle is always what zero, isn't it? And one point five should be somewhere here, isn't it? One point five, positive one point five should be somewhere here. A negative 2.25 should be somewhere here, isn't it? Negative 2.25. Negative 2.25, isn't it? So they said we should find the area between. Area between. Meaning from here to just here. Okay. So to find the area between them, here to here. To find the area between them, you go to your Z table and look for 1.5. Let's look for 1.5 from the Z table. 1.5. 1.5 gives us 0 0.9332. 0 0.9332. So to the left, meaning area to the left of 1.5 is 0 0.9332. 0 0.9332. Okay, I told you that when you check a positive value on a positive Z table, what you get means area to the entire left. Okay. Then we also check negative two point uh, two five on its own negative table. So we come to the negative table. Negative two point two five. We have negative two point two here. So five zero one two three four five. You see five. You see that. So negative two point two five. It gives us zero point zero one two two, isn't it? So this zero point zero one two two also means to the left. 0 0.0122 0 0.0122 0 0.0122 okay so it also means to the left so to know the area between them the probability between them okay you say 0 0.9332 minus 0 0.0122 okay that's how you calculate it so if you do it well you get c to be your answer 0 0.9210 so the correct answer for this is C. Okay, so let's proceed to question 19. Question 19 says, in using the Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution, A, lambda is equal to N P B, lambda is equal to N over P and C, lambda is equal to P over N, and D, lambda is equal to N times P times Q. Now, in using the Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution, okay, to find lambda, lambda means mean, okay, it's the same as a mean, I told you, if you don't see mean, you see lambda in place of mean, to find the mean, the mean, the mean is always equal to n times p, so a is the answer for this, n times p is your mean, okay, n times p is your mean, to get a mean, okay, n times p, when you're using Poisson approximation to binomial, you use the n in the binomial to multiply the p to get mean, so that you can use the Poisson. So the answer is A. Then the next question says, an average of five calls per service per hour are received by a repair department. Find the probability that exactly three calls will be received in a selected hour. They say an average of what? Five calls per, per hour, isn't it? Five calls per hour. So five calls. Average means mean, isn't it? So this is Poisson. It only gives you average and it's asking you to find probability. You should know it's Poisson. Okay. So the Poisson formula says what? So we are finding exactly 3, isn't it? S is exactly 3. Isn't it? So the Poisson formula says mean exponent x, isn't it? And our mean is 5, right? So 5 exponent x and our x is 3 times e exponent negative 5 e exponent negative 5 
Okay, negative mean all over x factorial, which is 3 factorial. So that gives you what? So put this on your calculator. The question 20, I mean, the question 20. You get 0 0.14032. 0 0.14032 sorry 0 0.14037 0 0.14037 and when you approximate to 4 days map it gives you 0 0.1404 so the answer is c okay the answer is c so you press 5 exponent 3 times you get to get the e shift and where you've written the ln you get e over the negative 5 all divided by 3 factorial Okay, yeah. So let's go to question 21. Question 21 says, find the z score corresponding to the 90th percentile. Just like that, find the z score corresponding to the 90th percentile. Just convert 90th percentile um, to um decimal okay 90 percentile it means 90 over 100 times 1 okay because the total area in the curve is 1 okay so 90 over 100 times 1 or just 90 over 100 that gives you 0 0.9000 isn't it 90 over 100 gives you 0 0.9 which is 0 0.900 when you know the area you want to find the z score the question is find the z score so you look for 0 0.9000 here. So let's look for 9000. You can't get 900 as well. You need 9000, right? It's between this and this. So you have you have one point. Since it's between the two of them, you take their values, add it together and divide by two. You have 1.28 and 1.29. And 1.29. Isn't it? 1.28 and 1.29. This and this is between this and this. 900 is between them. So you take their z scores like 1.28 plus 1.29 divided by 2. You get 1.285. Okay. 1.285. 1.285. But you can see 1.285 in your possible answers. And 1.285 to 2 decimal places 1.29. You can't also see 1.29 here. So you just choose the 1.28. Okay, that's all. If you see if you see 1.29 in the possible answer, just choose the 1.29. That's it. So 1.28. So let's proceed. Question 22 says, find a z, find z such that p into bracket small z less than z itself less than 2.5 equals 0 0.7672. To solve this. Now, you know, whenever we are finding area between, are you with me? We always find this to the left. This means between. We find this to the left and we also find this to the left. Then we find a difference between them to get an answer. But they give you the answer and they want you to find what made you subtracted them. Okay. Now, since the possible answers are in negative, meaning it's a negative value that is here. Okay. So what we do is that we find a Z uh you find a probability for 2.5 so let's find it 2.5 2.5 is 0 0.99838 okay 0 0.9938 so when you see this same question just take the 0 0.9938 are you with me 9938 0 0.9938 the z score for this person okay the probability for this z score okay then subtract the answer from it the final answer from it to get what the probability of z was okay so 0 0.76 okay 0 0.7672 So that gives you what? That gives you, um, I think, uh, 0 0.2266, right? 0 0.2266. 0 0.22266. Okay. 0 
So after getting the 0.2266, then you go back to the table again. Then you go and look for 0.2266. It can it can be seen over here. There's nothing like 0.22 here. So meaning to be in a negative table. Do you get it? So 0.22 since the z score will be a negative answer. So 0.2266. We are looking for 0.2266. 22 0.22 22 we are the down. We have two. We have two two zero point two two six six. There's two zero here. Two two is here. So see two two six six zero point two two six six. There is it. So when you check the z score for it, you get negative zero point seven seven what? Negative zero point seven five. You see that? So that's the z score negative zero point seven five. So the answer is C, negative 0 0.75. Okay, so let's proceed. Question 23 says, a fair coin is tossed five times, and the number of heads recorded, this is not beats, it's heads, H, it's a typing mistake. So the number of heads recorded. Find a standard deviation for the number of heads that will be recorded. Now, before you can find standard deviation, you need to find a variance. Now, do you remember we solved similar question like this in question? I think I've forgotten a question number. But there, they asked us to find the mean. And I told you that the mean is equal to n times p. Now, when you get a head, what's the probability of getting a head? The probability of getting a head is what? 1 over 2. In one toss. Isn't it? In one toss, the, probab the probability of getting a head is 1 over 2. And how many times do you toss it? You toss it 5 times. So, n is 5. Okay. And remember I told you to find the mean. The mean is what? 5 times what? 5 times 1 over 2. That's n times p to get the mean. And to get the variance, the variance is n. The formula for variance is n times p times q. Where q stands for 1 minus p. Okay. Times q. Where q means 1 minus p. Okay. So, to get variance, it works. What is our n? Our n is 5 times... What is our p? Our p is 1 over 2. Isn't it? Times q. What's, what would be our q? I said what? q is 1 minus p. So, whatever you have for p, you take 1 minus what you got for p to get q. So, 1 minus 1 over 2 also gives 1 over 2. It will always be like that, depending on the question you are solving. Okay. So, calculate that. 5 times 1 over 2 gives you 2.5, uh, right? 2.5. 2.5 times 1 over 2 gives you what? 1.25. So the correct answer for this is B. Question 23 is B, 1.25. So let's proceed to 24. 24 says, the average number of pound, pounds of meat that a person consumes per year is what? 218.4 pounds. Full stop. Assume that the standard deviation is 25 pounds and the distribution is approximately normal. Okay, normal distribution, but approximately normal. If a random sample of 40, so you see that this one too, you are given a sample and it's approximately normal. So you should know that the z-score you are going to use is the formula for z uses x bar, not the one that says x minus mean. x bar minus mean. x bar means sample mean. Okay. And mean mu means population mean. S bar minus mean divided by standard deviation over root n. Divided by root n. Divided by root n. That's the formula you use. Okay. So that gives you what? Now they said find the probability that the mean of the sample will be less than this is less than just less than okay two two four. Okay, so you consider your x, uh, x bar to be what? 224, isn't it? So you say 224. 224. The mean given in the head note is the population mean. What was given here was the population mean. The average of the number of pounds of meat. So this was the population mean. So 218 minus 218.4. 218.4. All divided by. What's the standard deviation? The standard deviation was what? 25. So you say, all divided by 25 over 
root n or you use the division sign like how I use it, and divided by root n or over root n. And your n is what? You took a sample of 40, isn't it? So your n is 40. I follow it. So fix this on your calculator. Uh, question 24. Just fix that on your calculator. You should get um, 1.42. 1.42 1.4167 that's 1.42 so when you get a 1.42 what it means is that when you sketch a curve okay 1.42 you know in a no standard normal curve zero is always at the middle don't forget that so 1.42 would have been somewhere let's say here 1.42 isn't it 1.42 but the question says less than 224. We've converted 224 to 1.42, isn't it? So meaning now less than 1.42. And which part is less than? When we say less than, less than means this part. Less than means we should find this part. If they say greater than, greater than means we should find this part. Less than means find this part. Do you get it? So we are finding this part. So to get this part, when you go to the Z table, let's first find 1.42. Now, I told you that when you check a positive z-score on a positive z-table, what you get means area to the left. So, let's look for 1.42. 1 this is 1.42. 0, 1, 2. So, 1.42 gives you 0 0.9222. Isn't it? So, meaning area to the left is 0 0.9222. 9222. So I told you that when you check a positive z score on each corresponding positive z table, what you get means to the left. When you check a negative z score also on each corresponding z table, a negative z table, what you get is also left. So since this is left, but this question wants us to find this place now. Nah. So it has already given us the answer 0 0.9222. So the correct answer for this is D 0 0.9222. So let's proceed to the next question question 25 a medical investigation claims that the average number of infection per week at a particular hospital is 16.3 a random sample of 10 weeks a, a week okay a random sample of 10 weeks has a mean of has a mean number of 17.7 okay that's how the question should be a random sample of 10 weeks has a mean of 17.7 .7 and a standard deviation of 1.8 infection you are to test the investigators claim at a five percent level of significance use this information to answer question 25 to 30. so to answer this question 25 says what would be the appropriate set of hypotheses or hypothesis the appropriate set of hypothesis should be b the reason is that they said a medical investigation claims that the average number of infection per week is is means equal to now there is no other word here like greater than there's no other word like less than or anything here so since there is no other word like greater than and is always go for null hypothesis you know that is goes for null hypothesis then you take the alternate as the opposite of equal to so opposite of equal to is not equal to there's no word like less than or greater than or increase or decrease here so the answer for this is b okay then question 26 which test statistic would you use now to know the test statistics you use are you with me go and check the sample size and uh, the standard deviation the type that it is now when you look at this sample size this sample size is less than 30 and also the standard deviation given is a sample standard deviation they say a random sample of 10 weeks give a mean of 17.7 .7 and a standard deviation of 1.8 meaning this standard deviation is a sample it's a sample standard deviation they say it is the sample that give the mean of 17.7 .7 and a standard deviation of 1.8 meaning this standard deviation is a sample standard deviation Whenever you have a sample standard deviation and whenever a question gives you sample standard deviation and at the same time the n is less than 30, the n is less than 30, are you with me? You are going to use T. So the answer for this is C, T. Hello. 
T can only be used if the sample size is less than 30 at the same time, not at different time, but at the same time, the standard deviation is a sample standard deviation. If those two conditions are not met simultaneously, if those two conditions are not met together, you are, going, you are not going to use the T. You are going to use the Z. Are you with me? For you to use T, these two conditions must be met together. N should be less than 30. And the standard deviation S should be a sample standard deviation. Those two conditions must be met together. If those two conditions are not met together, go and use Z. Like let's say the standard deviation was a sample standard deviation and the N is more than 30, you can use Z. Let's say the standard deviation is a population standard deviation and the N is less than 30, it is not met together, so you can still use a Z. But if they are met together like this, the, the standard deviation is a sample standard deviation and the N is less than 30, you use T. I was reading one slide, uh, that slide is not uh, in KNUST, it's not a KNUST slide. Uh, it's it's a University of Ghana slide, Legon. For them, they said when the N is less than 25, they said when the N is less, that particular slide, okay, it says when the N is less than 25, at the same time, the standard deviation is sample one, they use T, okay. But here, just take it that when N is less than 30, that's what I know, and that's what I use. When n is less than 30, at the same time, standard deviation is what? Sample 1. Then use t. So the answer for this is t distribution. Okay. So let's proceed. Question 27 says find the critical values. Now, this is a two-tailed test. Okay. Whenever you check the alternate and you have not equal to it's a two-tail. If you check the alternate, h a at times you write it h1, h sub 1, h sub 1. When you check the alternate and it's a less than sign, it means it's a left tail test. If it is a greater than sign, it means it's a right tail test. Okay. But this is not equal to sign. So it's a two tail test. Okay. So the cell should find a critical value of what? Critical values and that it is T. So we are using a T table. Okay. Critical value of T. So we take the T table. Now to find a critical value of T. Are you with me? You see, you are given significance of what five percent level of significance as five percent that's 0 0.05 isn't it now to check what is the sample size the sample size is 10 isn't it so to solve you are going to find degree of freedom first df degree of freedom is always equal to n minus 1 n minus 1 so 10 minus 1 gives you what the sample size is 10 so 10 minus 1 gives you 9 isn't it? 10 minus 1. It gives you 9. Isn't it? It gives you 9. So our degree of freedom is 9. Are you with me? Sorry. Then, the question gave us significance, which is alpha. Okay, significance is alpha. Significance of what is 5%, which is 0.05. 5% in decimal is 0.05. So if you want to check this on the T-table, you go to the T-table and you look for degree of freedom of 9. Degree of freedom of 9 will be here, isn't it? Here. Degree of freedom of 9. Now, since it is a two-tail test, I show you when something is a two-tail test. Okay. Not, when you have not equal to at all, it means it's a two-tail test. Now, since it is a two-tail test, you come and check where they've written two tails, okay? Where they've written two tails, and you check for 0 0.05 on that line. Since it is a two-tail test, you check for 0 0.05 on the line where they've written two tails. You see, there's a part they've written one tail. Don't check there. Just check where they've written two tails for the alpha. So, the alpha is 0 0.05, isn't it? So, trace it to the degree of freedom of 9. It gives you what? 2.262. Is that clear? Another way of checking it is, let's, let's assume your table has no two tail. It only has one tail. You have to divide the alpha by 2. When you divide the alpha by 2, it gives you 0 0.025. 0 0.025. 0 0.025. Okay. 
when you check 0.025 at where they've written one two you see that it's, it's on the same place again when you trace it to the degree of freedom of now you still get same answer so you can check you can use the one tail part to check it you can also use the two tail part to check it but when you are using them make sure you know what you are doing if you want to use the two tail part to check it if it's a two tail test only if it's a two tail test and you want to use a two tail part to check it just check the alpha at two tail but if you want to check one tail divide the alpha by two before you check it at one tail okay but if the question is a one tail test there's nothing you divide by two just then check alpha at where the written one tail okay but you leave this aside just take it like this you take alpha since it's a two tail test you take alpha and go and check alpha at where they've written two tail okay forget about the second one i was explaining for now just then check where they've written two tail because it's a two tail test then you check alpha over there it gives you 0 0.05 right so you check it that's 2.262 so the answer for this is 2.262 so it's plus or minus meaning at the left side it will be negative 2.262 and at the right side it will be positive 2.262 is that clear then the next question says the value of the test statistic will be now to find the value of the test statistic the formula for t is it also look like a formula for z okay sample mean minus population mean sample mean minus population mean over st sample standard deviation divided by root n okay you see that it looks like the formula for z that's how it is so according to the question what was our sample mean they say a random sample of 10 will give a mean of 17.7 so our sample mean is was 17.7 17.7 minus now what will be our population mean the population mean is what is stated at the beginning average number of average means mean 16.3 so the population mean is what? 16.3. 16.3. Okay. The population mean is the population mean is what was stated um, in the set of hypothesis, 16.3. Okay. So divided by now what is our standard deviation? What is our n? I told you our standard deviation is 1.8. And our n is what 10, right? So 1.8 divided by root 10. 1.8 divided by root 10. Divided by root 10. Division. Okay, not subtraction. Divided by root 10. Okay. So put this on your calculator. When you put this on your calculator properly, you should get uh this we are on question 28, right? So you should get 2.4595. That was 2. Point, that was 2.4595. That was 2.46. So the test statistic is 2.46. Okay, 2.46. So that's the answer to this 2.46. Okay, so let's proceed. Question 29 says, what would be the decision? Now, here, to know your decision, you are going to check the critical value and the test statistic. You see that the critical value is greater than the test statistic. Whenever your critical, in absolute term, in, po in positivity, okay, in positive terms, not in negative terms, in positive terms, if your test statistic is greater than the critical value what you are going to do is to reject the null hypothesis but if the test statistic is less than the critical value you fail to reject the null hypothesis we get it so for this for this this test statistic is greater than the critical value so since it is greater than the critical value we reject the null hypothesis so we are going to reject the null hypothesis Okay, we reject the null hypothesis. Question 29. Okay, we reject A2. So the answer is D. Then 30 says, what will be your decision? 
what will be your decision or what will be your conclusion sorry to conclude now you see ho was a claim are you with me whenever ho is a claim whenever ho is a claim because the claim was ho they said is so the claim was ho whenever ho was a claim and you ended up rejecting ho you are going to conclude that there is enough evidence to reject the claim if ho was a claim and you fail to reject it then you conclude that there is no enough evidence to reject the claim that's how you conclude this but if ha was a claim not ho but ha was a claim and you ended up rejecting ho you said there is enough evidence to support the claim okay you have to read more on that but here let me just answer the question and go since we rejected ho and ho was a claim the main claim was ho that Oh, this, this, this is 16.3, meaning the claim is HO. Since HO was a claim, H sub 0 was a claim, and we ended up rejecting it, the conclusion will be that there is enough evidence to reject the claim. That's why we rejected it. Okay. So let's proceed to this. Now, question 31 says, we should use the information below to answer 31 to 34, right? So 31 says, find the mean of the normal curve. Now, to find the mean, you look at the curve. Look at this curve. The curve was supposed to be straight, but I cut it somewhere and pasted it here. So, sorry for that. Now, the middle, okay, the middle is always the mean. So, it falls on 15. So, our mean is 15. Find a standard deviation of the normal curve. To get a standard deviation, look at this. This and this have same height, isn't it? They have same height. This place is called point of inflection. This place is also called point. Of, that is a point of inflection. They have same height at that level. Do you get it? So, to check the standard deviation, what is the difference between here and here? The mean and this place. The difference is 2.5. 15 minus 12.5 gives you 2.5. So, the difference is 2.5. If you check it for here, here too, 15 minus 17.5 uh, minus 15 is also 2.5. Have you seen that? So the difference is 2.5. The difference here and here is 2.5. Here is 2.5. So meaning the standard deviation is 2.5. You get it. So the standard deviation is what? 2.5. Is that clear? So we've gotten our mean to be 15 and standard deviation to be what? 2.5. Let's proceed. Question 33 says, if the random variable x follows a normal curve, find p into bracket x less than 20. Meaning we should find a probability that x is less than 20. So to find a probability that x is less than 20, what you do is that you first find z. And you know z is equal to, in a normal curve, okay, z is equal to x minus mean divided by standard deviation. So what is our x here? You consider your x to be 20. And what was our mean? Our mean was 15, isn't it? The mean we found here, it was 15. The standard deviation was 2.5, so it's substituting. So this tells you that if you get a mean wrong and you get a standard deviation wrong, the rest of your answers will be wrong for this question. You get it? Yeah. So 15. So make sure you know how to find the mean and the standard deviation properly. 15 over standard deviation, which is 2.5. So put this on calculator. What do you get? 20 minus 15 gives you 5. 5 divided by 2.5 gives you 2. So it gives you positive 2. So what this means is that you should check positive 2 on the z table. Right? If 0 is at the middle here, what would 2 be? Let's say 2 will be somewhere here. And the question says what? x less than 20, meaning x less than 2. So less than means this side. Less than means this side. Greater than means this side. Less than means this side. So let's look for 2 on the table. 2.00. 2 means 2.0. It gives 0 0.9772. 0 0.9772. And I told you it means area to the left, isn't it? So we've gotten the area to the left straightforward. 0 0.9772. And in this question, we needed the left also, isn't it? So it gives us 9772. 9772. Isn't it? And we are looking for the shaded portion. And the shaded portion is already the left, which is 9772. So you just pick it straight. This 
The answer is D. Now, 34. 34 says, find probability that x is greater than 12. So, you find z here too. z will be equal to x is 12. You consider your x to be 12 and the mean is 15. Mean is 15. And the standard deviation is what? 2.5. 2.5. So 12 minus 15 is what? Negative 3, isn't it? Negative 3 divided by um, 2.5 gives you what? It gives you negative 1.2, isn't it? Check it if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Negative 1.2. Kindly check it, please. Negative 3 divided by 2.5. Yeah, it gives you negative 1.2. So what this also means is that when you check, and sketch a curve. If you know the answer, there's no need. If you know how it operates, okay, there's no need sketching the curve, okay. So zero. You know, negative will be at this side. Positive will be at this side. So negative. So let's say negative one point two. So negative one point two. Point two. That's one point two zero. Okay. Negative one point two zero. Now. The question says greater than 12, meaning greater than 1.2. So which, this is less than, this is greater than, okay. So this side is greater than, so meaning we should find this side. Are you with me? Are you with me? So let's go and look for negative 1.2. Negative. So negative 1.2. Negative 1.2 gives us what? 0 0.1151, isn't it? 0 0.1155. So where do I tell you that it represents? It means the left. When you are checking a negative z score on its own z table, it also means the left. So, negative, uh, it, gi it gives you 0 0.1151. 0 0.1151. Don't forget that rule. The thing is, when you check a positive z score on a positive z table, the answer you get means the left. Do you get it? When you check a negative z score also on its own negative z table, negative on its own negative, it also means the left. But if you are doing otherwise, like you are checking positive or negative or negative or positive, then it means right. So that's a different thing. But don't go there. Since you have the two tables with you, you get it. Yeah. But you can study that on your own. When you have the two tables with you, check negative z score on a negative table. You get the answer to the left. You get probability to the left. When you get when you check positive z score on a positive z table as well, you get the area to the left as well. Okay. So we've gotten the area to the left. But we need this side, not this side. But we got this side from the table, isn't it? So since we already know this side, to get this side, we we'll say 1 minus 0. Point, 1 minus the left, okay? So 1 minus 0. 0.1151. Do you get it? So 1 minus 0. 0.1151. Okay, 5.1. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.1151 gives you what? It gives you B, uh, 0 0.8849. The answer is B. Okay, so the correct answer for this is B. Okay, so be very careful. The reason why we are saying 1 minus is the total area under the curve is always 1. You know, probability, maximum probability is 1. So the total area under the curve is 1. Okay, so let's look at question 35. Question 35 says, if the random variable x follows the normal curve, find p for 10 less than x less than 20. So to do this, you are going to find two z's. So we find z1. Z1 will be equal to what? Uh, that will be 10. You consider your first x to be 10. 10 minus 15 divided by 2.5. 10 minus 15 divided by 2.5 gives you what? Negative 2. Isn't it? So you get negative 2. Negative 2. That's negative 2.00, okay? Negative 2 is the same as negative 2.00. You get negative 2.00. Is that clear? Then we also find Z2. Z2 will give you what? 20. We've already found it here. Z2 will be 20. It was found over here, you see. So 20 minus, since it's MCQ, you can quickly, if you know what it is, you can quickly use it. Okay, so 2, 2.00, so as not to waste time, 2 or 2.00. So what you are going to do is that, they say we should find the area between 
to a negative to, isn't it? What this means is that I'm sketching a curve so that you understand what we are doing. What this means is that if, let's say, the middle was zero, right? The middle is always zero in a, in a standard normal curve. Okay. So if this side was two, are you with me? And this side was negative two. Let them have same height. Okay. Since they are the same, this side was negative two. I Meaning you should find the area between two and negative two. This one without checking the table. Okay, you should find the area between 2 and negative 2. To, to find it, you go to where 2 is. You go and check 2. 2 gives us what? 0 0.9772, isn't it? Which means what? Area to the left, isn't it? So area to the left of 2 is 0 0.9772, isn't it? Keep it down. Now when you check negative 2 also, Negative 2 gives you 0 0.0228. So you are going to find a difference. Okay. So 0. Point, that one also means to the left. So 0 0.9772 minus 0. Point, we are using this, this, and this. So 0 0.9772 minus 0 0.0228. It gives you what? 0 0.9544 so that's the answer to this so the answer is c so 0 0.9544 is that clear so let's proceed this says uh i didn't draw the curve well manage it for me please this says find the area to the left of z now z has been written here and it says you find the area to the left of z now look at something it's important you know that this is a middle, isn't it? This is a middle. It's important you know that. Are you with me? It's very important you know that. The total area under a curve is always equal to 1. Isn't it? The total area is 1. Now, apart from that, if the curve is divided into two equal parts, half of the area is 0 0.5 and half here too is 0 0.5. So this part is 0 0.5. The whole, the whole of this part is also 0 0.5. So if this part is 0 0.5, and you know from here going is 0 0.5 and you know from here to here and the question says find the area to the left of z meaning we should find this place this blank space here we should find it that's the meaning left of this isn't it left is that left yeah so we should find this place so to get this place since here to here here going from here going is 0 0.5 to get this blank space, since this place is already known to be 0 0.4175, just say 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4175. Are you with me? 0 0.4175. 0 0.4175. Is that clear? Well, that's how you do it. You know, half of the curve. Uh, half of this bread is 0 0.5 so if from that uh, from that half also if from here to here is already 0 0.4175 then to get the rest when you do 0 0.5 which is which was the whole minus this part you get the side okay so do that you get your answer to be a 0 0.0825 is that clear then the question is find the value of z now to get the value of z to get the value of z, you go to the z table. Now, you know this place to be what? Just this place. To be 0. Point, you know it to be this. 0 0.0825, isn't it? So, to find the value of z, it's either. Now, look at. Your z is at the negative side. Are you getting me? This z. This 0. Z, since z is located at the left of the remaining is it will be a negative answer so since it will be a negative answer you can go and check it on a negative table so since we use this to find this side meaning if you know this area you can use it to find z as well so you have to go and check 0 0.0825 on the negative z table so we look for 0 0.0825 so we are looking for 0 0.08 0 0.08 we have 0 0.08 here, 25. 
you have 0 0.0823 you can see 5 so you can the next after this is 0 0.0838 which can be used okay so you, you, you can take the answer for 0 0.0823 and that gives you what negative 1.39 negative 1.39 so the answer is d negative 1.39 another way of checking it is you see this 0 0.4175 you add it to 0 0.5 here when you add it to this 0 0.5 you get 0 0.9175 so for that one you check it on the positive z table 0 0.9175 so let's look for 9175 91 9177 is here you can see 9177. So you can choose the answer for 9177 as 9175. That gives you 1.39. Have you seen that? But since it's at the negative side, you attach negative to it. So negative 1.39. That's another way of getting it. Okay. So let's proceed. 38 says find the value for chi square right for a 90% confidence interval when n is equal to 25. To find the chi chi square okay or chi square first you need you also need degree of freedom in this one this is not t okay but here too you need degree of freedom degree of freedom is equal to what n minus one which is 25 minus one which gives you what 24 i hope you get that 24 now after getting the degree of freedom now to get chi square right are you with me now the formula is one minus C divided by 2 okay 1 minus C divided by 2 if it was left you use 1 plus C divided by 2 keep it okay for left you use 1 plus C divided by 2 okay for left but for right you find area to the right okay area to the right is equal to 1 minus c divided by 2 area to the left area to the left is equal to 1 plus c divided by 2 write the formula down that's a shortcut formula for finding it area to the left is 1 plus c divided by 2 area to the right is 1 minus c divided by 2 so our c stands for the 90 percent 0 0.9 okay so that gives us 1 minus C, so this small c stands for 0 point, and 90 percent which is 0 0.9 so 1 minus 0 0.9 divided by 2 that gives you what 1 minus 0 0.9 so gives 0 0.1 and divided by 2 gives you 0 0.05 0 0.05 okay so we've got the area to the right of 0 0.05 and degree of freedom of 24 so you go to the chi table this is how the chi table looks like so you see x square you see you see chi square base 0 0.995 going but you go and look you need 0 0.05 and degree of freedom of 24 so you go straight to where they've written see this chi square base 0 point you see there is a point before the zero you can use your table use your own table to check it chi square distribution table there's a zero before the point if there is a point here and there's nothing written at the front of the point, it means there's a zero there, 0 0.05 or 0 0.050, exactly. So you check it, you trace it towards degree of freedom of 24. So we are going to 24. 24 will be here. So it will be here. That's 36.415. Thirty-six point four one five. So the correct answer for this is C. Exactly. So let's go to the next one. Thirty-nine. A survey of thirty adults found that the mean age of person's primary vehicle is five point six years. Assume the standard deviation of the population is zero point eight years. Find ninety-nine percent confidence interval for the population mean. Now to find confidence interval, the formula is x bar plus or minus s bar plus or minus now first you must know if you are going to use z or t okay if it is z the formula will be x bar plus or minus z multiplying standard deviation over root n over root n okay if you are finding confidence there for mean it has two formulas 
the first form the other formula is x bar plus or minus okay the first formula is x bar plus or minus z times standard deviation over root n the second formula is x bar plus or minus t times standard deviation over root n in t we write the standard deviation as small s okay over root n now how do you know if you are using this formula or this formula you have to check the question now they say a survey of 30 arrows so this one is already 30 so it's it's a large sample like 30 or more from 30 going upward it's a large sample okay or when you even check the standard deviation they say assuming the standard deviation of the population meaning this is a population standard deviation so it is z remember you can only use the t when the standard deviation is a sample standard deviation at the same time the n is less than 30 that is the only time you can use the t so for this one we are using z okay so to find that what was the mean given in the question they said the mean age of persons is 5.6 so our mean is 5.6 5.6 me? 5.6 plus plus or minus what is our z now whenever you have let me you can memorize it okay for exam sake but you, you should know how to find it whenever you have uh 90 percent 90 percent confidence okay 90 percent confidence the z score is always uh one point one point six four five or one point six five okay 1.645 when you have 95 percent confidence when you are 95 percent confident okay the z score is always uh, 1.96 or 1.9 yeah let's say 1.96 1.96 okay the z score is always 1.96 when you are 99 percent confident confidence okay 99 percent confidence interval the z score is always 2.58 or 2.578 2. Point, let me give you 2.578 or you can approximate it to two decimal place 2.58 but let me use 2.578 2.578 okay if you are 98 percent confident it's 2.33 or so something like that but these are the most common ones they've been asking 90 percent 95 percent 99 percent and 98 percent so you can keep their answers if you don't want to be finding it separately so the z score i'll show you how to find it the z score for uh, 99 percent confidence is 2.578 so you can substitute it there 2.578 2.0 or let's use the 2.58 2.58 is the same as 2.578 times what was the standard deviation the standard deviation was 0 0.8 this isn't it so 0 0.8 0 0.8 over root n isn't it and our n we took a sample of 30 so our n is 30 so it's 30 are you with me so it gives you what 5.6 5.6 plus or minus plus or minus when you calculate this separately okay when you do that you get 0 0.3768 0 0.3768 now this thing remember I want to tell you something about this this part this part just this part alone the part you do z times standard deviation over root n or the part you do t times standard deviation over root n is called margin of error it's called what? margin of error don't forget that it is represented with e capital e okay whenever a question asks you to find margin of error e the question just wants you to take either the e and z or the t or something and multiply by standard deviation over it and just that one so in this one the margin of error is 0 0.3768 something like that but that's not what we are interested in right now we are finding confidence interval so to get a confidence interval you first take the minus the one that says minus 
but we say plus or minus. Please always take the minus first. When you take the minus first and you do 5.6 minus 0 0.3768, you will get 5.22. Are you with me? 5.2231. Okay. Then you bring less than mu. Less than. Then you do the one which says plus. 5.6 plus 0 0.376 it gives you what? 5.9768. Please, if you want to understand confidence interval better, I have some videos on this on the channel. Okay, check my playlist on the channel. You see videos on confidence interval so that you learn more on it. Okay, so this is zero and uh, five point nine seven six eight, and this is five point two two three one. So when you check the possible answers, all the possible answers are in two decimal place. So you have to convert your answer to two decimal place. So to give you five point two two, this one will give five point two two, and this will give you five point nine eight. Let's check. You have five point two two and five point nine eight here. So the correct answer for this is A. Exactly. So let's see. Forty. Forty says find a critical T value. For alpha equals 0 0.01 with n equals 23 for a left tail test. This only says left tail test. Okay, it's not two tail, it's not two sided, just left tail. Left tail means it is one tail. If your question says left or right, it means one tail. If it says left tail, it means one tail. If it says right tail, it means one tail. Okay, for two sided, you know what to do. So since this is one tail, just find degree of freedom, DF, okay. Degree of freedom is equal to what? Will be equal to 22, isn't it? 22. N minus 1. 23 minus 1, that's 22. And your alpha is what? Your alpha is 0 0.01. At times, they can give it to you as 1%, okay? Just convert it to decimal, okay? Alpha is known as level of significance, 1%. So, that's 0 0.01. So what you do is that you go to where they've written one toe. Since left toe means one toe, you go to only where they've written one toe and check for 0 point what? 0 0.01. So this is 0 0.01 here. Don't make mistake and go and check 0 0.1. You are looking for 0 0.01, not 0 0.1. Okay, this mistake can be committed by anyone. Okay, so go to 0 0.01. Now the degree of freedom is what? 22. So we are looking for 20. Degree of freedom of 22. 22 is somewhere here. So here. 22. So it will be here. So the answer is 2.508. 2.508. 2 so the answer is 2.508. Now, the reason you have to, let's say the possible answer, there is positive 2.508. Let's say in the possible answer, there is positive 2.508. And negative 2.508. The reason why you have to choose negative for this is that it's a left tail test. If it is a right tail test, your answer will be a positive answer. But you check it same way. Okay. Yeah. So, make sure, kindly do well to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you watch more of these uh, videos. And you can refer. I have an explanation on each topic confidence interval, normal distribution. I have explanation for them separately in different videos. Okay, so you can check that out. Okay, so thank you for watching. Good luck.